What's up guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com and today I'm checking out the 420 boot from the made to order shoe company, John Doe Shoes. So, John Doe Shoes. You may not have heard of them before. They do have a bit of a reputation on Reddit, but largely speaking, they are not the most popular brand out there because they really spend very little money on marketing. Their whole shtick is that they take the money they would have spent on marketing and instead use it so you can have a less expensive pair of made to order boots. And the reason they're called John Doe shoes is because they think you should pay for quality and not a name. And John Doe was like, not a name, you know what I mean? So 80% of their orders are made to order down at a small family owned facility in Mexico. Sometimes they have random sizes and varieties lying around their website. Maybe it's gonna be in your size, maybe if you're lucky. But generally the idea is that they're a made to order company. So of course you can customize the leather, but also the sole, you can get different colored stitching if you want, you can get a storm welt if you want. All these sorts of things. But this is the pretty standard 420 boot and it is one of the most popular. So let's get a closer look at it. So this 420 boot in Chrome Pack leather has a pretty standard service boot type aesthetic. It's got a pretty low profile toe. It's pretty rounded toe box as well. Plus there's this nice flush pull tab at the back, which means that it doesn't stick out from underneath your pants when you're walking around, which is a really nice touch. So the look, the overall aesthetic, the overall uh, silhouette of this boot, it's not quite as slim or sleek as like a, a Thursday boot or a Parkhurst boot. These companies that are really trying to nail that blend of work boot and dress boot. This is a bit less formal, but I still would say it's a bit cleaner and simpler and dressier than like some of the more work booty work boots like an Iron Ranger or something like that. Now it is not super hard to find people on Reddit with complaints about this company's quality control. Uh, that is some stuff that I've read about. I want to say that John Doe Boots actually reached out to me to send these to me. So there is a very good chance they are going to be trying harder to make this a great boot because they know that I review stuff on YouTube because I'm so famous. But there's still a few quality control issues here that I wanted to point out. Some of the stitching was a bit uh, asymmetrical. So if you're looking at the toe caps alongside one another, the stitching is quite a bit uh, further apart. The two rows of stitches are further apart on the right boot than the left boot. Also, some of the stitching down by the laces, uh, they have triple stitching along the side of the vamp, but on the right boot on the outside stitching, two of the lines of stitching kind of converge and become one line of stitching at the very end, which doesn't happen elsewhere. There's also the stitching on the back, the heel stitch. They are in two different places on the boot and also a lot of people think they look like a little butt crack and they don't like that. So that's, that's a uh, subjective thing, but I did want to mention that. People do complain about this heel stitch back there. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is the speed hooks. Now they are a little bit closer together than the eyelets are, which might've been done on purpose. But I also noticed that over the last few months, and I've been wearing these boots for a few months, which is why they look kind of dirty and messed up. I wanted to point out that the speed hooks, as time has gone by, as I have been drawing the laces together, over and over and over again, they have sort of torn a little bit in the leather, which is probably the only one of these QC issues that are really going to stand out to the average person. No one's actually going to notice that. And it's always a bit funny when people really, really get super fastidious about this sort of stuff that no one is really going to notice, let's be honest. I get it when you're paying a lot of money, but these boots are very inexpensive. So truthfully, I have a hard time getting very upset about these at the end of the day, very minor issues. Although the tearing around the speed hooks, you know, I'm not super crazy about that. Okay, so this is five ounce English tan colored chrome pack. Chrome pack is not the world's most popular leather, but it's a pretty cool option for your wardrobe, I think. It's a full grain chrome tanned leather from Hallwayne Leather Company which is probably the most beloved tannery in the United States. And in many ways, it's, it's sort of similar to Chrome XL, which is the most popular leather for these types of boots, I think, like most of my boots are Chrome XL. But Chrome Pack is more informal and outdoorsy, and it's also a lot more oily and stuffed. It has like as much oils and beeswax as can fit into the leather. Compared to Chrome XL, I'd say it feels more durable and tougher and it has better water resistance. I've been wearing these around New York City for a couple of months now and it really hasn't picked up that much damage at all. Although I acknowledge it's not quite as lustrous and as pretty as some combination tanned leathers. So, you know, it has its pros and cons. So this heavily oiled finish creates a pretty nice barrier against like scuffs and water. So when you're talking about this sort of oily stuffed leather, Less is more when you're talking about conditioning. You don't need to really agonize about whether or not you've brushed them today. You don't need to worry that much if you've conditioned them this week. Uh, there are a lot of guys out there, they'll brush and condition every time they wear them and then they wind up kind of staining their boots. 
With this sort of leather, it is pretty tough, like especially relative to Chrome XL. I know that there's like quite a bit of dirt on these. I apologize for that. I have worn them hard. I find that important when I'm gonna review boots. But even though I've had these for a couple of months, there's really very little scratching in the leather. And if these were a pair of like Chrome XL boots, that would be pretty different. And I would feel a need to condition them more often to help take care of those scratches. These boots, they don't scratch that much. So I think they're a pretty good uh, option for guys who really just don't wanna spend that much time thinking about how much they should be conditioning their boots. If you do want to condition them, this kind of leather, it really doesn't need much babying. It's not the kind of stuff that you need to really agonize over if you've conditioned them or not this week. When they get wet in rain or snow, like let them dry, uh, especially in conditions like that, you want to use a shoe tree, I think, uh, so that way it can help to draw some water out of it and help to prevent it from kind of damaging the leather, getting too musty in there or something like that. Generally speaking though, these won't need conditioning very often, uh, probably, I don't know, every few months, maybe once or twice a year. I wouldn't worry about it too much outside of that. When it is time to condition them, if they are looking pretty dry, I would recommend just some plain old Venetian shoe cream. It's gonna do just fine on these sorts of leathers. You could also go with a mink oil or mink oil paste. That would also work. It would probably darken the leather, but it would probably help to enhance the weather resistance. Although again, they're pretty weather resistant already. So this is a rubber outsole. It's one of the many out there that look like Daynite, which is a fancy rubber sole you get in boots like Viberg and Trickers, but it's not Daynite. It's a more standard issue, relatively flexible sole that is very lightweight and pretty comfortable. I'm pretty happy with it. So you get a rubber outsole, then there is cork and a leather midsole, and finally a leather insole. So that has more going on in the sole than you usually see in these sorts of boots. Like normally it's like outsole, leather, or cork, and then leather. This has both leather and cork, which will help it to mold the shape of your foot over time, as it has with mine. I've only had these for a couple of months, but I am getting there. It's fully leather lined as well. There's also a steel shank in there for a bit of stability, although it does make it a bit of a pain to go through airport metal detectors. So these shoes are available in sizes seven through 15, and the widths available are D and E. E. That's it, although they are planning to release a triple E size eventually. They might have by the time you see this video. Right now it's just D and E. Now there is no shortage of complaints about people getting the wrong size in these shoes on Reddit. So I have no real complaints about the size. I do want to say the laces are kind of far apart. Like I can't get them together too tightly. So the laces being this far apart make it a little bit closer to looking like sneakers than I would like them to. It's not a massive deal, but uh, yeah, maybe the last is like a little bit narrow. Um, that's worth pointing out, but it's not uncomfortable. I was pretty happy with it. And I also really want to say these boots are they're just so inexpensive. I can't sit here complaining that like the leather is not as nice as a Viberg shoe or the arch support is not as nice as a white shoe or something like that. Like they really are inexpensive. So I'm not super shocked or horrified by like slightly wider stitches in some point, or the fact that the arch support is not amazing in this shoe. For what I'm paying, I think it's pretty fine and I'm overall pretty happy with the comfort. So as far as the price goes, these 420 boots here in the Hoenn Creme Pack leather with the rubber outsole, uh, they cost about $232, everything all said. And they do free shipping as well uh, to the US and Canada and Mexico, which a lot of people really like. So that is super inexpensive. And this is honestly on the pricier side for John Doe shoes. A lot of them are under $200. Uh, and the reason for that, as I mentioned, is they just don't put that much money into marketing. They put it back into production. So yeah, for a made to order shoe, even with these like tiny little QC problems and so on, I think $230 is pretty good. There are some people that don't, to be fair, some people think the QC stuff is so outrageous they would never pay more than $100 for these shoes. In my opinion, $232, bucks, like it's not as cheap as Thursday or something, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with the value. All right, so why should you consider getting a pair of these John Doe shoes? The big point for this company, as you might have figured out by now, they are very cheap and they are customizable. If you wanna get a customized pair of shoes, but you don't wanna pay enough money for like, whites or nicks or something like that. Yeah, this is a pretty good price for a customized boot. It's pretty nice Halloween leather as well. That's really important to a lot of folks. Halloween leather company, everybody adores them. Chrome pack leather is very interesting as well. I was really happy to be able to give it a shot. It's a good year welt as well, so you can like replace the sole when you want, if you want, if it runs through. There's always a big bonus as well that always makes for a pretty high quality shoe. And also it's leather lined as well. I'm not totally sure if this is glove leather lining. It's not quite as buttery soft as like the lining used on Taft boots or Thursday boots. But overall, good lining. It's a nice, simple aesthetic, good quality leather, good sole, and uh, it's Goodyear welted as well. So there's a lot of good things about the boot.
Uh, there are a few potential downsides with this company. The wait time, you do have to wait about three or four weeks to get these shoes. That should not be a surprise for customizable shoes. And I have certainly ordered from Indonesian made to order companies before where the wait time is like three or four months, often longer than that. So I don't think three to four weeks is like a big wait time at all, but they're not really the kind of company where if you say like the look of this boot, you just want to get a size 11 and be done with it. No, you, you have to wait. So that is worth pointing out. Uh, I also wanted to mention that um, the fit, I was pretty happy with the fit, but I cannot deny that the most common complaint I hear about this company is that the fit often turns out kind of funny. I would have, to be fair, preferred the laces uh, to be able to come together a little bit more. Like I think it's maybe an ever so slightly narrow fit. Uh, that only really manifested in the laces. It's not a massive deal. But yeah, when you are ordering this, um, I guess I would just say be careful about describing what size your shoe is. You might be fine like that, I think. Finally, the quality control problems. I think they're minor. This is a really big sticking point for a lot of people. I really just think when you're complaining about quality control stuff, it has to be weighed against the price of the boot. So yes, uh, I've said this already, but yeah, the stitches are a little bit funny. Sometimes they run over each other when they shouldn't. Uh, sometimes they're not totally symmetrical. I don't think any of this is a big deal given the price and given the fact that no one actually notices this stuff when they look at your shoes. I do wanna say the tearing around the speed hooks, I wasn't crazy about that. That was probably my main complaint, but generally speaking, I think this is a pretty good value boot. I think if those little stitching stuff bothers you, then this is going to bother you. But for most people, I think it's fine for the price. All right, those are my thoughts on the 420 Chrome Pack boot from John Doe Shoes. If you want to read the full written review, see a bunch of pictures, get a close look at the kind of stuff I've been talking about. The URL is in the description below and make sure you subscribe as well because I have a ton more reviews and comparisons coming up.